All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to talk to you about the accessibility settings inside of Discord, along with some other settings that I feel might be relevant when you're looking to tweak Discord so that you can get the most out of it if you're hard of seeing or things like that. So to begin with, you're going to want to go to your user settings. Those are stored in the bottom left-hand corner under the little gear icon next to your profile icon and your profile name. And then inside of there, you'll see all these different tabs on the left-hand side. What we want is the app settings section in the middle. And then the second one will start on underneath of accessibility. So accessibility includes a few different settings. The first one being saturation. This controls how saturated the colors are. You can also apply custom choices by toggling this button right here. This will allow you to adjust things like the colors of the roles that people set up on the different servers that you spend time on so that you can kind of like adjust those for your visual preference. You can sync the contrast settings with your computer, which I have on by default. You can also reduce the motion that happens inside of Discord if you have some issues with motion in your visual space. I just sync that with my computer with this toggle here at the top, but you can disable that. Then you can enable reduced motion. You can automatically play GIFs when Discord is focused. That means when you click the Discord window, so it's what you're using right now to like look around, it'll automatically play GIFs if you don't want it to do that to either save on data or to save on like what you see, including a lot of motion, you can disable that. That's why I've got that disabled. And you can also select whether or not you play the animated emojis on the platform, which are basically just GIFs. Down here, you can determine if stickers are animated, which are just big emojis that are uploaded to Discord. You can also show send message button. That way, if you're typing and you don't want to accidentally hit enter and send the message before you're ready, you can enable a physical button that you have to click to send the message. Text to speech. You can allow or disallow people to use the text to speech command, which will randomly send you uh, whatever someone's typed verbally. If you're hard of seeing and you need something heard you might want to enable that i leave it off because people tend to abuse it and then down here you can determine and control the speed of text to speech either faster or a bit slower and then hit the big blue button to preview that next up i'm going to point out that there's a lot of different settings in the preview of appearances area that can change how things are displayed this would be mostly on how text is spaced out for readability. So at the top here, you can see a preview of what the text will look like with your current settings. Down here, you can change the different themes from dark mode to light mode to synced with your computer. My preference is dark mode. Here you can have the two different message display types. You've got cozy, which is the regular version, which is kind of like spray spaced out a little bit. You can see my character icon. You can see my message, you can see the timestamp. Compact is more technical, it's just lines of text. It can be hard to delineate between messages and message groups that way, I prefer cozy. Down here you can make the font larger or smaller, you can space out the lines between message groups more or less, and then you can actually zoom in your whole Discord like a browser with the zoom level, or you can hit control plus or minus to do the same thing just like you're browsing the web. After that, we're gonna pop into text and images. This is going to be how Discord handles showing you images that people send you, links, whether or not they auto embed or not, and all of that sort of stuff. So down here, it says display images, videos, and lolcats when posted as links to chat. You wanna display that from a link, yes or no. Uh, do you want to display images when they're uploaded directly to Discord without having to click to preview them? Yes or no. You can have image descriptions enabled. This will allow you to use your reader from your computer to read off what the image is supposed to be if you're hard of seeing. That actually would be very important to turn on if you can't see very well. That way your computer can read off what the image is supposed to be to you if it's got a tag for that. You can determine whether or not it shows automatic embeds or link previews in text. 
You can determine whether or not to show emoji reactions on messages. You can actually right click a message and react with like a poop emoji or a smiley face emoji, whatever you want as sort of like your reply. Down here, you can automatically convert written emoticons into like the proper visual emoji. I leave that off because I like old school emoji, but that's a personal preference thing. You can also have it suggest stickers to you when typing messages, yes or no. You can use slash commands to do things like preview emojis, messages, mentions, markdown syntax as you type, if you want that enabled, yes or no. Some of this stuff can be kind of like a visual garble and distract or confuse, so it, it's just good to know that it's there. And then threads are like a, a message channel within a message channel so that you can have a separate but related conversation to whatever is going on in the main chat while everyone else is talking, so it keeps things from getting cluttered. I don't see these used a lot, but you can determine whether or not you want open threads to have like a second window pop into the main window, or if you want to physically click on the whole thing. Down here, show spoiler content. You can determine that like if somebody's trying to not spoil things with a spoil tag, you can make it so that you have to click on it to read it. You can only you can always see them on servers that you moderate, or you always see them all the time. After that, down here you've got language. You can see what language your computer, or not your computer, but your Discord is currently using. If somebody like your friend is trying to troll you and they change it to like Japanese, you can tell what the language is down here by the flag that it's currently using. And some countries and some languages have more than one country, and some countries have more than one language, so you can kind of get a sense for what everything is here in the side, but there might be some extras or duplicates like for English there's American English and UK English. And then I think the last one that I'll showcase is that here under voice and video is where you'll see your controls for your output device which is currently not set for me which is weird and your input device. Output device is your speakers or your headset you'll want to make sure that that's selected correctly so that you can properly hear everything going on on Discord. And similarly, don't leave your microphone as the default device either. Select the correct one, then you can control the volume for both, and click on Let's Check to get a preview that you can hear of yourself talking to make sure it's properly working. Down here under Input Mode, you can do Voice Activity, that way when you're automatically talking, it'll try to pick that up and open your microphone so that people can hear you speak when you're in a voice channel. If you find that it activates from a lot of background noise, I prefer a push to talk button these days. And this is important so that if there's a lot of fan noise, kids screaming in the background, cars revving their engines, other people won't have to constantly hear that or you chewing your food or whatever. If you do select push to talk, you can set the shortcut by clicking on this button and then hitting whatever button you want to record it as your push to talk. And then you can tweak the delay that it'll wait us a couple milliseconds after you stop pressing the button to cut off your microphone because some people naturally will kind of talk a little bit as they lift their finger from the button and you don't want your message to get cut off prematurely. Similarly under voice activity the automatic input sensitivity works pretty well for 90% of people but if not you can manually look at this bar to determine at what point your voice sets off the automatic opening and then you can tweak it so that it won't open unless it knows you're speaking. But a push to talk tends to be a lot easier. Down here, you can determine what webcam you use and see a preview. And you can also pick an automatic background that removes the background from around you and replaces it with an image or a video, which can be nice if you have a messy office or bedroom or wherever you have your computer and you don't want people to see behind you. And then down here is some advanced stuff like being able to suppress the noise automatically behind you and around you using crisp technology works pretty well, fully recommend it. And then this audio codec information. This is a lot of stuff about hardware acceleration. I would leave that on, it makes things run buttery smooth. You can determine if you wanted to do automatic echo cancellation and noise reduction. Both of these work really well and they shouldn't neuter your microphone unless you've got one from like the, the late 90s or something. And then down here, automatic gain control and advanced voice activity. I would just leave those on automatically unless somebody in like a tech support forum, because you're having a bug, tells you to enable or disable them. 
And then down here, you can enable or disable packet priority. This gives Discord priority on your network. That can break things and make them act funny, so only turn that on if you really need it. Attenuation is an automatic thing that reduces the audio of your computer when other people are talking, or other people when you're talking, depending on what's going on on the server that you're in. You can determine if it's when you speak or when others speak. That way you can always hear and there's not audio spilling over from your game or your computer into your microphone. This is handy if you have like speakers and not a headset. You can enable both of these or disable them as you prefer. And then you can determine how much it gets attenuated by just dragging this little slider here. And then audio subsystem. Standard is the uh, current full release version of the audio system that makes Discord run. You can also choose like the experimental latest and greatest or the legacy old version that's no longer working inside of Discord. You typically only want to run legacy when somebody tells you to. Experimental can have bugs, use at your own risk. You can use the latest technology to capture your screen. If you find yourself screen sharing a lot, I recommend that. It's the best way to do it. You can use experimental method to capture the audio from your computer. It doesn't break anything, and it's the best way to, again, capture what's going on in your computer. If you want to share it with your friends, fully recommend leaving that on. Uh, you don't necessarily need it, but voice diagnostics tells you if Discord stops detecting anything from your microphone while you're trying to speak. That way they're like, hey, I see you're pushing your push to talk, but sound isn't coming out. Maybe check that which can be good because sometimes you touch your microphone and you accidentally hit it with some static electricity and it stops working. So it'd be nice to know when that's not doing what it's supposed to. Down here, you can do diagnostic audio recordings to check to see if something's broken, enable or disable as necessary. And then you can upload your debug log to Discord if you're trying to resolve an issue. Although I will warn you, Discord's got millions of users and not nearly enough staff. So trying to get them to help you fix a technical problem or even try to report anything to them is typically hit or miss with more on the miss side. So that's kind of a little overview of the accessibility settings inside of Discord. I hope you found this helpful. This is just kind of a look at how to tweak these so it's easier to see things, hear things, and do all of that. There's a few other settings that I didn't really cover because you can do things like look at all the key bindings to make it easier to navigate Discord and create new ones at the top here by clicking add key binding. And then there's also some basic stuff like the Windows. Do you want this to start up with Windows or not settings and all of that? But it's not specifically accessibility, but you might want to look through all of these settings anyway to make sure everything works the way that you want it to work. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm happy to answer any questions you have in the comment section below, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.